mortgage interest rates. Do you ever wonder how mortgage interest rates move? Well, I'm going to share that with you during Money Shot today. Mortgage rates follow the bond market and mortgage-backed securities and based on the Fannie Mae 30-year bond. Similar to corporate bonds, mortgage-backed bonds trade all day, every day, which means mortgage rates move up and down all day and every day and follow what the bond market's doing. In general, as the price of mortgage-backed bonds change, so will the interest rates. This applies to conventional mortgage-backed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac bonds, FHA loans, VA loans, and USDA loans backed by Ginny Mae mortgage bonds. The price of mortgage bonds are based on the supply and demand. So when Wall Street demands for mortgage bonds increase, all things equal, mortgage bond prices rise. Now, mortgage rates move in the opposite direction of mortgage bond prices. So if mortgage bonds are trading higher, you're going to see mortgage interest rates drop. If mortgage bonds are losing in their trading price, then you're going to see interest rates improve. Demand for mortgage bonds can change for a multiple of reasons. The most common is risk avoidance because most mortgage-backed bonds are guaranteed by the U.S. government. They're considered extra safe and unlikely to default. During periods of economic or political uncertainty, mortgage bonds tend to be in high demand, which leads mortgage interest rates at lower. The trading pattern is known as flight to qualify, and it's fairly common one. Now, with a weak economy, investors, typically you'll see that the investors are pulling out of the stock market and they're investing in bonds for the security of the bond market. In a stronger economy, investors want to see a higher return, so they're willing to risk a little bit more, so they'll pull out of the bonds and invest in the stock market. And so usually you're going to see opposite stock market from the bond market. We're seeing a great stock market. You're going to see not so great of a bond market. Typically, that's the way it's going to work. Now, also rates are subject to adjustments, price changes made by the agent security of the bond. So generic name for such adjustments is loan level pricing adjustments. And loan level pricing adjustments are similar to the middleman, fees that they are reflect in the risk of insuring a particular loan trait. So for an example, a mortgage interest rates might be a, a two-unit property versus a single-family home. You're going to see higher interest rates for multifamily versus single-family. Also higher interest rates for condo versus single-family. Investment properties, rates are going to be higher than primary. And rates will increase for borrowers with lower FICO scores, and they're going to decrease with borrowers that have higher down payments. These are all factors that are based on the risk of default. So I'm sure you could imagine that an investment property is going to be at a higher risk of default than a primary residence. Somebody that has a lower credit score, some challenges with credit, obviously are going to be at a higher risk of default than someone that has strong credit. So that's where you're going to see those adjustments at all based on the risk factor. Now, things that don't control mortgage interest rates, aside from loan level pricing adjustments, there are no other direct forces in the U.S. rates. For example, it's commonly said that today's rates follow the path of the 10-year Treasury note, which is another government-backed insurance. But this is not true. Over the course of years, mortgage interest rates in the 10-year Treasury note will track together. On any given day, however, they will not. So there are plenty of days on which mortgage bonds and Treasury notes are different. The Fed's fund rate is also not linked to mortgage interest rates. The Fed fund rate is the overnight interest rate in which banks borrow money from each other. And it's an interest rate fixed by the Federal Reserve and used to speed or slow down the U.S. economy. The Fed funds rate and the 30-year mortgage rate are different by as much as 5% points over the last 10 years and by as little as one and a half or 1% point over the same period of time. And last, mortgage rates are not governed by the Federal Reserve or any of its members or any of the elected U.S. officials. The actions of the nation's central bank can affect demand on the mortgage-backed bonds, but none can set home loan interest rates. So when you see the prime drop, it doesn't mean necessarily that the mortgage rates are going to increase. Sometimes they, when the prime drops, you don't necessarily see mortgage rates decrease. Sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. It depends on the strategy. The prime is increasing or lowering prime rate based on on trying to improve the economy or not. So if it works, 
then you're going to see the opposite. And if it doesn't, you'll see it follow. So just some interesting things on interest rates, mortgage interest rates, on how they work. And since that's my arena, I thought I'd bring some of my expertise into studio. Coming up next on the Money Hour, is it bad credit holding you back from getting approved for a mortgage car or credit card? Having good credit scores is extremely important to your financial future. And if getting denied for having bad credit is a problem for you today, I have a solution. Scott Schaefe with Prime National right here on 1150 AM KKNW after the short break.